I've just been studying the SRA's SQE2 results report following the results release from the October 2024 SQE2 assessments and it made some really interesting reading. For more details of some of the conclusions that I've made from it that all SQE2 candidates will need to see, stay tuned, but only after the jingle. If you want a piece of this, why don't you come and visit us at SQE2? So the SRA's report into the SQE2 results from October 2024 came out in February 2025, a link for which you'll find in the blurb below this video. But what I'm going to focus on is what you, the candidate, need to know coming out of that report. So firstly, the pass rate. Secondly, which subjects are candidates doing well on and not so well on? And thirdly, whether candidates were better at certain skills than others? Stay tuned. SQE TV. So just before we get started, here's a reminder of what SQE2 is. It's the second part of the SQE regime. It consists of 16 mini assessments or stations as we like to call them. It tests oral skills and written skills and the marks are divided 50% for the relevant skill and 50% for the relevant knowledge, the functioning legal knowledge that is tested in SQE1. So you need to bring that forward and make sure you maintain it between your SQE1 assessment and your SQE2 exams. SQE TV. So let's start with the headlines from the October 2024 SIT for SQE 1. There were 1,026 sitters, of which 840 were first time sitters. Of those first time sitters, the pass rate was 83%, and if you included re sitters, the pass rate was 81%. One interesting thing from this assessment is that the pass rate was higher than any other SQE2 assessment to date. Uh, we're not quite sure why that's the case and we'll keep an eye on future SITs to see if there are further trends that are starting to develop. And one other thing just to mention as a general comment before we go and look at the real detail, and that's that the pass rate for SQE2 is always higher than SQE1 in case you were wondering, and that's because the overall standard of candidates is going to be much higher because the majority of candidates would have already passed SQE1. SQE TV. So which of the knowledge subjects did candidates score well in and not so well in when it came to the October 2024 SQE2 assessment? Now remember, each of the skills is tested in the context of one of the following five functioning legal knowledge subjects from SQE1. So there's business law, criminal litigation, dispute resolution, property practice and wills. And in exploring the data, what I did was I looked at how the middle quintile of students performed. So not the top 40% or the bottom 40%, but the middling candidates who passed the exam. Remember, the pass rate was over 80%, but not the worst or not the best candidates. And this is what I found. On the list you can now see on the screen, I've ranked the five FLK functioning legal knowledge subjects that were examined in SQE2 in the order of how well these candidates did. And you'll see that Wills came out on top. It was the clear winner across all three sittings of SQE2 in October 2024. And it's worth mentioning that candidates who sit on different days will sit different papers. But what's really clear from the data that I've seen from these candidates was that they performed very similarly across the three sittings when you looked at the subject matter that was tested at each station. So they did best at Wills, but dispute resolution wasn't that far behind. The clear middling subjects were property practice and criminal litigation. There wasn't much to choose between them. And the worst subject overall was business. Clearly the worst subject. It was a very distant fifth and last place compared to the other subjects. In fact, the three worst stations out of the 16 that candidates were assessed on were the business scenarios in case and matter analysis, legal writing and legal drafting. And when you look at the marks for the other business station, which was a legal research task, they were only middling at best. So clearly it's a really good message for anyone planning to sit SQE2. If you work on your business scenarios and try and get those marks up, you're likely to actually get a better mark than if you spend too much time on the other subjects like wills, maybe litigation, uh, dispute resolution, where you may well be getting naturally high marks anyway. SQE TV. Interestingly, when I looked at the same data and asked whether candidates were tending to do better at some skills rather than others, the picture was much less clear. It didn't really seem to indicate, at least from the data, that students were preferring one skill over another. 
And this suggests that the marks rescue E2 are tending to be much more consistent for the skills element than the functioning legal knowledge element. And therefore, the overall mark that you get is going to be much more dependent on how well you do at the FLK part of the assessment. And I think this makes sense because most candidates will I think in most cases have had a good grounding on the skills if they do a good SQE2 prep course. They're more likely to be able to execute a skill consistently than successfully applying the law to the facts in each of the 16 stations. In a nutshell, I think it's easier to make a mistake on the law than completely make a hash of a skill. So as we come to the end of this particular video, let me leave you with three final observations. Well, firstly, I think it's essential that candidates ensure that they are just as solid on their FLK in those five areas for SQE2 as they were in those areas for SQE1. Don't just focus on the skill. Secondly, why do we think that Wills were top of the league and business bottom of the league when it came to how well students were doing in this assessment? Well, I think it's because Wills and probate candidates tend to find those concepts a little easier to understand, they're more relatable, and I think a lot of candidates find some of the complexities in the business syllabus in terms of the processes and the law a little harder to get your head around. And finally, when you're revising for FLK2, make sure you don't just focus on the subjects you're good at. Really consider putting in extra time for the subjects you're weaker at, like potentially business, like was the case for these candidates, because you're much more likely to boost a score that naturally would be 0, 1 or 2 out of 5 by a mark or two than perhaps wills, which might be a stronger subject, if you're already likely to get 3 or 4 out of 5. SQETV We'll give you a similar insight into the January 2025 SQE1 results when they are released shortly. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, if you found it useful, please do click that like button. And obviously, if you want to watch more content like this, make sure you tap that notification bell and you'll be alerted as soon as our new videos drop. And please do comment if you liked it. Uh, if you've got further questions, just let us know. We're always happy to engage with any questions that our viewers, our skewers, as we like to call you, may ask ask. And finally, as we always do, when we finish an SQE TV video, we say it's now time for the jingle. If you want a piece of this, why don't you